When Overwatch launched, it had a vision and it knew what it was trying to be. A 6v6 hero shooter where a group of people chose different characters that were based around the holy trinity of character design. Tank, damage, support. That synergy between that holy trinity made for a game that was amazing. Concord, on the other hand, and I'll be comparing it to Overwatch pretty much this entire video, is a game that I don't think knows what it wants to be. And I don't think it really does anything to cement itself in any one direction. Is it a hero shooter? Is it just your typical arcade shooter? It's trying to be both. And I don't think it works. When I saw the original trailer for Concord, it was at the PlayStation event. They showed the trailer with the character sitting in a diner arguing about hot sauce or something. And then they got a call to do a heist where then there was this big cutscene of them chasing, getting to the heist area, whatever, whatever. Very Guardians of the Galaxy. I was under the impression just from that trailer alone that this game was gonna be maybe something like a third person action adventure game, story game with a heist, some sort of a shooter maybe with a heist element, like story based pretty much. And that was what it would be around. I never thought it was gonna be a hero shooter, arcade shooter that was like 6v6, 5v5 sort of thing. That never came up. That was never on my mind. And then all of a sudden it was, and that's what it was. And I instantly lost interest. I'm not gonna lie. As soon as I saw that that's what it was, I lost all my interest in the game. And now that the beta is out and I've put a few hours into it, I can still say that my opinion is the same as it always was. I still don't think that Concord is a game that has a very clear direction. It is a hero shooter, but it's also trying to maybe tap into that sort of like Destiny slash Call of Duty market where it has a more arena a shooter style vibe to it but with characters that have abilities and try to fit into that holy trinity of tank dps and support but i don't think it works and i don't think that riding the line between the two really helps it have an identity don't get me wrong the game is beautiful i think that the graphics and the graphical fidelity the textures are are beautiful they're great they're amazing i think the art design is bad i think the character design is bad and and the world itself doesn't interest me in any way. Just look at this character. What the heck is this thing? Look at it, what is it? I don't know. I still don't know and I've played them. And that's one of the big issues that I have with this game. None of the characters are interesting or unique. They don't have a very recognizable silhouette to me. Like if I were to look at every single Overwatch character as a silhouette, I could name those characters. Hey, who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu. It's always Pikachu, honestly. But none of the characters really stand out for me. They're all cringy, goofy sci-fi with no real cohesive design to it, in my opinion. I think it's all kind of bad. But then on top of the characters not being very unique or interesting in any way, and in many cases just downright ugly, their movesets don't really do anything for me either. And it seemed to me that in many cases, the actual abilities that most of the characters have are kind of really to just support themselves. There are certain abilities that will affect other players like healing and there's like some armor you can give people and stuff like, yeah, some, some abilities do affect other players, but some abilities also affect teammates in a negative way. For instance, there is a character who can throw a smoke grenade and they have an assault rifle that has like a thermal sight on it and they can see through the smoke grenade. The thing is, no one else can see through the smoke grenade. So if you are throwing a smoke grenade at the enemy team and uh, your whole team is with you, you're the only one who can shoot at him. That doesn't help anybody. Likewise, if you are a character who has the ability to, let's say, throw down an orb onto the ground, and that orb, let's say, think the character, what it does is it the orb pings. And if there's an enemy that runs through there, it'll ping that enemy and show you that somebody's there. Uh, so you can throw that orb and if your teammate walks in front of you, it'll hit them in the back and just fall to the ground. That doesn't help anybody. That is really stupid. But also the character abilities didn't really feel like there was a whole lot of synergy between them. It wasn't really one of those things where I felt like, oh, if I were a combo with this character and if they use their ability and then I use my ability as well they would like help both of us out and even like 
maybe even boost our power a little bit because more of a situational power, less like DPS than anything, but like situational ability, stuff like that. Kind of in the same way that like with Overwatch, you could take alts and like Zarya could throw down her gravity and then Hanzo could shoot a dragon through it and kill everybody. Like that's the sort of synergy I'm talking about. That doesn't happen in this game. This game very much is trying to ride that sort of line with Call of Duty or these sort of other arena games where you want to play as the lone wolf you can, but also at the same time we have tanks that are incredibly slow and absolutely do need a healer to stay with them to keep them alive as well because healers for the most part kind of suck at damage, except for one of them. It's just, there's so much stuff where it's just kind of like they are trying to push into that sort of synergy and teamwork thing, but they don't go all the way with it. And I wish they would just pick one or the other. So one thing I wanted to add to this post script because I went back to play the game to get some more footage and just it kind of came up. There are characters in the game where you have to recharge their abilities by getting kills and some of those characters are healers. So what you are effectively doing is you are telling support characters that in order for them to be able to use their abilities to heal other characters you need to actually get eliminations i don't think that's a good system there are other characters that if they even want to use their abilities at all for instance the guy with the revolver you have to get kills to recharge that thing and when you kill somebody it drops an item so that you can then even get to use your knife again that is so stupid why are things not just on a cooldown why do they need specific things that go against the type of class that they actually are, especially in the case of the support characters. That's really dumb. But also, just to throw this out there, I think one of the other issues with Concord is that I think Concord could have probably had a place or could have had an audience, quite possibly, if it came out four or five years ago, before we started getting this sort of live service fatigue. Unfortunately, Concord is right in the middle of that live service fatigue. There are way too many games that are trying to be forever games that are trying to keep your attention and they are all over and every single game is pretty much doing the exact same thing in terms of how they are trying to keep your attention. And there's just not enough time for every single person to play every single game. And I think that the audience for people who are trying to play games that are live service is spread super thin right now, especially since we had heard that Sony was going to put out like 12 of these things in a year or six of these things in a year. It's too much. And I think that one of the things that is potentially screwing Concord over quite a bit is Sony itself and the fact that this is a $40 live service game. Okay, back to your regularly scheduled program. Not to mention the game modes that are in the game itself are things like Team Deathmatch, Domination. There are six modes I think at launch. So it's Team Deathmatch, Domination, basically King of the Hill. Team Deathmatch, but it's kill confirmed. So when somebody dies, they drop a thing on the ground, you pick it up, it counts it as the kill. And then you have two one life modes. So basically one life mode where you can go and capture an objective. There's a one life mode that's basically search and destroy. The only mode that Overwatch had at launch that was sort of any of these was King of the Hill. And so maybe that's the mode where teamwork matters the most, really. But the rest of it, in my opinion, most people are just going to run around Lone Wolf because that's how those games have been played for years. People are not going to change how they play those game modes because Concord exists. That's not going to happen. And so because those game modes don't have an objective focused mode, the way that Overwatch did, where you are pushing an objective from one part of the map to the other, or you're working together as a team to push onto an objective and take it, I don't see a lot of people working together. And so it's just going to be you choosing a character that you like and then playing as them with no real support for the most of the time. And I can tell you that that's how it's going to work because that is how every single game went when I played this beta. That is how everybody played the beta when I was playing it and I imagine that is how everybody is going to play the game when the game launches. Also as an aside, I played with an Xbox controller and the game did not swap over my input commands from PlayStation to Xbox. So there were some buttons that I just simply could not hit. For instance, the PlayStation 5 controller, the PS4 controller as well, has that little touchpad that you can click to bring stuff up. Uh, I don't have that. I have an Xbox button 
and I clicked it and nothing happened. So there needs to be some sort of a swap there. Hopefully you guys can get that fixed at the launch. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, the weapons themselves felt okay. They have certain amount of recoil, that kind of thing. I did notice that some of the hitboxes on these characters were kind of huge. In many cases, I was getting shot around corners and I couldn't tell if that was desync or if I just have a big hitbox and they were able to hit it. For the majority of the weapons, you're gonna see things like assault rifles, pistols, SMGs, there's a single sniper rifle, a chick with knives, a bunch of launchers of different varieties, and then a girl with a crossbow, magic crossbow thing. She feels very out of place in this game, by the way. She feels like a fantasy character in a sci-fi world. Not a fan, I don't think. Once again, it's confusing character design. Movement felt okay, unless you're playing as a tank. And this is the one reason why I think that no one is ever going to play a tank seriously in any capacity. You are so slow as a tank that if you take damage, you're never going to get a health pack unless you just camp health packs the entire time because the majority of people once again are going to play to themselves they're not going to play as a team and if you get a healer who actually heals you let me just say that you will be very surprised and so tanks in my opinion were not fun to play because of how slow they were some of them didn't even have any sort of like dodging or movement tech so you just had to sort of hope to sprint away from a fight if you were low health and uh, you're so slow you're not going to so it wasn't very fun in my opinion and then on top of all of this this is a $40 game and it also requires you to have a PlayStation Network account even if you're on PC, which means that there are still many, many countries who will never get to play this game because of the Sony PlayStation support not being in certain countries. And this is a game that I wholeheartedly believe probably should open up the countries to being able to buy this because I feel like they're gonna need all the players that they can get. I want all games to be good. I do, I really truly do. I don't want crappy games, but I don't think that Concord really has an identity and I think that it being confused is also confusing to the players. I don't think it knows what it wants to do. And at the end of the day, the actual gameplay itself is just kind of mediocre. Shooting, like I said, is okay. The guns have a certain amount of recoil, but nothing felt spectacular in this game. Nothing felt even like amazing or super good. It just kind of felt a little ho-hum. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you played the Concord beta, let me know what you think. I could be wrong. And if you enjoyed it, hey, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I did not. I'll see you guys next time. I've been Bubba Game Reviews, signing out.